And my name is Richard. I'm recently an accepted uh, med school applicant, uh, and I'll be starting this fall. How did you create your school list? Yeah, so thankfully in the post back they gave us a lot of great advice as to how to choose schools. Uh, specifically for me, uh, because I did a post back I had to find a bunch of schools that were post back friendly, uh, that did see that I can't handle this rigor of med school. I know my low GPA, or I say below average GPA, may not demonstrate the full story, but doing very well in a pre-medical post-bac, formal post-bac, uh, will show that I can handle it. Uh, so from there, I went on the MSAR, and I looked at a bunch of schools, averages uh, for GPA and MCAT, and on top of that, I did further research to see if they were post-bac friendly. And on top of that, uh, one main piece of advice I was told is just to apply broadly. Um, the med school application cycle is very unpredictable, so you can you never know. Uh, just ensure that the schools that you are applying to are out-of-state friendly, or if they have a significant in-state preference, uh, and where they would accept students if they did do a post-bac. Interesting. I never really considered the post-bac thing, but yeah, I mean, that's a fair point. <laughs> um, what kind of challenges did you feel like you would face having a low GPA and MCAT? Uh, it's just, in, in essence, it was a little bit of self-doubt. Um, knowing that when I would look at these very high average numbers and seeing that my scores didn't exactly line up with them, I created a little bit of doubt to really, to, to, for me, uh, if I really did have what it takes to be a doctor. Um, I know on the admission side, for them, a GPA and MCAT can tell a lot of a student's academic potential. Uh, if To be a doctor, I know these exams that you have to take in med school are very difficult. These licensing exams are very long, very difficult as well. Um, so really what they're looking for is to see if these, this student has the potential to do well and pass and be a board certified doctor. And my low scores may not demonstrate that full story. Um, I did my absolute best to do well in my post pack to show I can handle it. Uh, but I was just looking on the other end if they even weighed my post pack as much as I would like them to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I when I applied, I also, I think, I definitely had a lower score than you did. <laughs> um, I feel like my GPA was pretty good, but my MCAT was definitely on the lower side too. And I think I was literally shocked, like, the first time I got an invite, and mm. I was like, is this for real? Because <laughs> I was like, surely there was a mistake. And it's kind of interesting, because once you get to med school, like, nobody cares about your MCAT, right? And... Um, I was telling you earlier, like all of my friends, we all scored the same <laughs> low score on the MCAT and, you know, we're about three months from graduating now. So it's kind of interesting to see, like, this is a standard and clearly we didn't do so hot, but, you know, we all passed our boards and we all got our residency interviews. And so it's just kind of interesting, like the emphasis that is put, but at some point you do have to compare apples to apples. <laughs> yeah. How do you feel like your stories helped you overcome your stats? I would say the specificity of my stories, they did feel very unique to me and uh, thank you for helping me get these very, very specific stories out of my, I guess, my background. Um, I de definitely demonstrated that I had the passion uh, and I wasn't doing a checklist type of application just to do, say, I did research, I did some volunteering. And no, these were things I've been passionate about ever since I was in middle school and have been volunteering or doing, working with certain communities. Um, and it, I think showing that I really had a genuine passion and wasn't checking off a list really shows that in the future when I do become a physician, I will continue along that mission and um, you do that. <laughs> Can you tell me what your brainstorming process was like for primaries and secondaries? Yeah, so uh, I basically did an outline. Um, thankfully, when I applied a post-bac, it was kind of like a min mini primary where I had to have at least a list of everything I've done. Uh, so basically, I wanted to create a, a story uh, that kind of sums up my, I guess, all of my extracurriculars. So when I did a primary, um, I would say I wanted a paragraph or two paragraphs that kind of split um, one paragraph demonstrating why I wanted to work in the underserved communities and then one paragraph uh, explaining why I want to help the special needs. And as you can see in my, uh, my extracurriculars, 
it did show that I had a lot of underserved work and a lot of special needs work. So really it was trying to figure out what specific stories I did want to tell, um, mainly from my background, like my earlier days, um, that really demonstrated the why I wanted to go into medicine, what was my initial motivation, and just pinpointing um, a specific story from each, I guess, each side. So timing <laughs> is a huge part in applying. When did you submit your primary application? I officially submitted my primary application August 4th, 2022, which I know is late. Uh, unfortunately, my primary and secondaries took a lot longer to write uh, and get edited down. I received my secondaries for the majority of my schools on August 22nd, and I submitted the bulk of my secondaries uh, about a week later. That's very fast. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get all your secondaries done? Uh, what I did was I did my absolute best to pre-write. Uh, thankfully, a bunch of schools did not uh, change their prompts from years prior. So I essentially Googled what uh, the previous year's med school prompts and if they weren't uh, changed so much, I did my absolute best to make sure these were pre-written. I did have a ranking of schools I would want to attend, uh, meaning like a tier list. And then I prioritized those schools and thankfully a lot of uh, many schools shared prompts uh, as I believe they do hold a lot of the same values. Uh, so I made sure to answer those first and uh, so I could apply to many schools or I should say submit the secondaries for many schools uh, all at the same time. What are some of the things that you learned during this cycle? That med school admissions is very unpredictable. Uh, you could apply as early as possible and hear back super late. You could apply super late and hear back essentially right away. Um, so really, you don't know how things will turn out, which is essentially why I would say apply broadly as possible, because you really never know. Uh, med school admissions is, won't give you strict deadlines as to when you'll hear back, when you sit, press submit. Um, so you're just along for the ride. Uh, so don't feel bad if you are late in the cycle and you still haven't heard back. There's always hope. I feel like there's nothing that makes you feel more out of control <laughs> than applying to med school because once you hit submit, like everything's just out of your hands and yeah. you just need to pray. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, is there anything that you would have done differently? Uh, if it was in an ideal situation, I would have taken my MCAT a lot earlier just so I could start pre-writing my primary and secondary, make sure they're all edited down as soon as uh, med school admissions, I guess the application cycle opened. I did apply a little bit later than most students uh, would ideally do, uh, but unfortunately in my circumstances I had to apply late. Um, if I could have everything in my control, I would have definitely, definitely, definitely have everything done by March, maybe even April, just to make sure as soon as day one opened I could press submit, just so I could put myself in the best position to get my application read. Yeah, and that's generally the rule of thumb that you want to apply as soon as possible mm. and even verifying can take up like to a month mm -hmm. and especially in the busy season so it's actually kind of surprising to know like how many students don't actually hit submit that first day or even the first week so it definitely does give you an advantage mm. if you apply early how expensive was this cycle for you so I definitely applied to more schools than the average applicant would. I applied to 51 schools in total. Uh, so for primaries and secondaries, the total cost came out to about $8,000. So it was very expensive. But luckily you had all virtual interviews, right? Yeah, so one uh, good thing, I guess, for the most recent application cycles is all interviews or 99% of interviews are virtual. So you don't have to pay for any flights, any hotels, any type of travel. Yeah, that was probably the most expensive thing um, for my cycle when I applied. And I think just w going to one place, I remember cost like $700. Mm -hmm. So it was crazy. I think that change was actually for the better. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my students also said that she got a fee waiver mm -hmm. and I feel like that is something that no one ever thinks about because I think most people who apply usually don't need a lot of like fee assistance, but I think that's a pretty good habit to do. <laughs> and she said it saved her, I think one to two grand. So it was actually a lot of money. Yeah. For 
people who have low MCATs mm -hmm. or low GPAs, mm -hmm. what advice would you give them? Do not doubt your ability to get into med school. Um, you may feel a little bit behind the curve, uh, but just know you will be a doctor one day, no matter what your numbers tell you, you are qualified. Um, just make sure you can tell your story in the right manner. Um, there was one of my professors told me that med school admissions or any type of admissions into graduate school is kind of like a stool or a three-legged stool or four-legged stool, I should say. Uh, so basically you have your MCAT, your GPA, your letters of recommendation, and your experiences. You can lose one of them at the very least. You, you can maybe even lose two of them, which is low MCAT and low GPA. But if your letters of recommendation and your experiences and your primary application can really tell your story and show what you've had to possibly overcome, or why you are will be a fantastic physician in the future, demonstrating your passion for certain things. Schools will notice that. If a school was just focused on just MCAT and GPA, that would just be the only things required for an application. But them requiring a personal statement as well as an activities list really does demonstrate that they hold it very in high regard. Can you tell us about how you reacted when you got your first acceptance? The first acceptance, I was in absolute shock. Uh, I believe I was at work <laughs> and I received a phone call uh, from a, the area code that the school was from. Uh, I didn't expect to hear back so early. They actually said uh, two weeks I would hear back, but I actually heard back in about a week. Uh, so it was a very quick decision. Uh, it was in absolute disbelief because I never heard an acceptance phone call before. I've only heard the stories. But actually hearing it, the Dean of Admissions calling you to tell you you've been accepted was very, very big. Um, I mainly called my parents. I, I surprised my girlfriend when she got home. I told her, like, hey, does this email like read funny to you or something like that when they <laughs> finally sent me an email? Um, but yeah, it was an absolute disbelief because it really does show, like, I will be a doctor one day. Like, that, that was the biggest shock. Like, knowing, like, it, it really, like, a dream really did come true. How did you feel when you got your first MD acceptance? My first MD acceptance, uh, I was ecstatic, <laughs> uh, knowing that my stats were, I know, below average for both uh, MCAT and GPA. Uh, but when I received that email, it really did show my skills, or I should say my uh, activities and letters of recommendation really pulled through. I knew my interview skills were top-notch thanks to the prep with you. Um, and these schools did recognize that I would be a, a fantastic candidate and it really relieved a lot of my self-doubt um, as I knew I was fighting an uphill battle with these lower stats but it did show that these schools did value everything else in my application. Yeah I remember when I met your girlfriend like I think one of the very first times um, I was a med student like rotating mm -hmm. and she told me like I think Richard would be such a good doctor and he works really hard and I just want him to, you know, basically be able to get to where he wants to go, mm -hmm. right? And so, um, yeah, I'm just super proud of you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> what do you hope to show other students now that you have gotten your acceptances? I would say it's definitely possible uh, to over overcome these this uphill battle of fighting numbers. Um, thankfully, med school admissions is not all a numbers game, but unfortunately it does play a part in your application. So if you could do your absolute best to do everything within your power to get those numbers up, at the very least show a trend that you are improving. Because uh, at the end of the day, you really want to show academic potential as med school is very, very difficult. Uh, make sure to continue your passion. Uh, do not do a checklist type of application. If you really have specific passions, even if it's one or two things, try to flesh out your application to really show why that's a passion of yours or how you've been able to express your passion in many different avenues. Um, I could give an example. One of my friends, he's a stem cell researcher, and he only did stem cell research mm -hmm. for his research side and had multiple publications. He did a lot of mentorship just in stem cells, he was able to flesh out stem cells into even a podcast about stem cells where he interviews um, physicians or researchers in that field. So you can use a pas passion that not just takes up one activity on your activities list, but you could use your passion to flesh out many different avenues.
Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>